There we go. Okay. How's everyone doing this morning? Okay, we have our, our canvas primed with Bob Ross Liquid White. Okay. I use Bob Ross Liquid White because I bought a ton of it before the documentary came out and everybody kind of changed their mind. Plus, I don't know how to make my own, so. <laughs> okay, we're going to use today. I'll show you guys what we're going to use first before we get started, okay? We're going to use a one and two inch brush, whichever ones you have, a nice thick kind of soft blending brush, okay? We're going to use a couple fan brushes. So we have the, the size 10 fan brush and then a micro size fan brush which you can find on my Amazon shop. I'll give you the link in a minute. Then we have a micro script liner from Meaden and probably the small palette knife or a butter knife or however you can get yours to work, okay? Do we have any comments already? <clears throat> Roberta Harris says good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning. Look at, my, look at my cute little teeny palette because we're just going to do a blue, black, and white today. So I figured I didn't need to clean my entire big palette that I've been doing all the classes with, you know, which we'll talk about as well. So we've got our liquid white on our canvas, nice and, and thin. You can see there's not a whole lot coming off onto the brush. So let's go into our blue. We have the Prussian blue today, the darker color blue. And we have our uh, midnight black and then titanium white, which you can see. You see how I load the brush like that, kind of tapping it into the, the palette? That ensures a nice even distribution where there's no thick you know, big chunks of paint on one corner of the brush. Let's go up and you can see with the liquid white that we have on there, just how it gets lighter as it comes down, right? It goes on real thick and then it gets nice and light as it comes down. And that's just blending into colors that would take me forever to try to get, you know, this light blue color versus that dark blue color. And when you use the white, it just does it for you and it's fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of black this time. And well, we have lots to talk about this morning, right? But I wanted to get painting just so I didn't get uh, people bored right off the bat, right? Of course, we have to cover the sides. You can tell the different colors in blue. We got a nice royal blue over here, and this one's kind of muddled up with the black. Just makes it look a little bit more stormy. So as you guys can see, Happy Little Landscapes, right? Has now become Paint with Josh. We have been thinking about doing that for a long time. Probably two months, right, babe? Yeah. Yeah, probably two months we've been thinking about changing the name. And it's only because, you know, all the big channels, not saying that I'm big, I hope to be big one day, but not saying that I am now, but all the bigger channels, you know, you have paint with or paintings by, you know, all these different people. So I figured I would jump on that trend and sort of get it done now. It was such an anxiety-ridden decision, you guys, like... I felt ill as soon as we changed the name and now it wasn't Happy Little Landscapes, this little logo that I could hide behind. It was me and my face and oh God, right? It's just, it's very nerve wracking kind of taking your brand and then becoming the brand. It was, it's, I don't know. I'm still, still slightly nauseous from it, I guess. All right, we're going to cover over our sides real quick and then we'll get out of your way. Bam, 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 bam. <clears throat> okay, so we're only doing blue, black, and white today for anybody painting with us. Does anyone have any questions? No. I, I kept Andy, seeing... Andy Cattroli's here. Annette Babcock's here. Annette, what's happening? Oh, by the way, we're going to be doing a drawing for that free painting at the end of the day today, so... Well, the stay, end of the day, the Well, the end of the video, the end of the show today, we're going to be doing a live drawing, so stay tuned. For those of you who entered for the $1 and was able to get your entries in for, you know, the little, the giveaway that we're doing, we call it a giveaway, right, babe? Yeah. Let's see. Wow. We're just going to try to match these slightly. It doesn't even have to look the same. You know what I mean? Just a little bit of glare down in our, our water if we even end up painting water, right? We don't have to paint water. We really don't. You can see I'm just kind of pulling in from the edge. If you start in the middle, you're going to have this big, thick line of paint that's going to be very hard to get rid of and blend out. So start on the edge. Almost hit the side of the canvas and then drag forward. You know what I mean? And that way you ensure you don't tap in the middle and deposit a whole big bunch of color where you don't want it. And I like turning my brush sideways. Instead of being vertical, if you turn it sideways, you're blending more. You're getting more... 
than just those initial sideways uh, vertical strokes to the side, right? Okay, now we're gonna go over the whole thing because it's so nice and light that we're not gonna take too many of those colors and, and go across and ruin all of our little water sheen, right? If it ends up being water sheen, it could end up being something different. However yours looks, right? Getting a little rough at this canvas today. It's moving on me. So yeah, we did the name change. Happy Little Landscapes will never go away. It's like my baby. I'll always wear the hats. I'll always promote that logo. It took me two years to build that logo and recognition, which is another reason why it was hard to change paint with Josh. But we've done it, right, babe? We did it. No sense worrying about it now. So we, it was funny because we had one time uh, I got a call from someone that wanted me to advertise in their magazine, and it was a gardening magazine, and they thought that Happy Little Landscapes was a gardening service. And I was like, it's just one more reason why we need to change, be a little bit more precise with people about what we do, right? Mine was a little bit dry right here in the center, so I just added a little touch of liquid white just to keep the canvas wet, right? Some of the times, depending on the canvas you buy, you could end up with, you know, one that's more thirsty than the rest, and it just kind of sucks up the liquid white quicker. And it's got to be wet in order for you to do the technique, right? So if you, if you put yours on, I did this one time. I bought liquid white, I put it on, and the canvas went dry immediately. And I was like, what is wrong with this liquid white? I must have got the wrong stuff. But no, it was the right stuff, but the canvas wasn't double primed. It was a very cheap canvas I found at a little store. And uh, looked exactly the same, you know, on the front. Everything looked fine. As soon as you put paint on, it just soaked it all up and became very dry and hard to work with. You gotta have wet to have a wet on wet painting, right? Okay, so now that we've kind of reflected our sky down into our, our whatever's gonna be below, it could be water, it could be anything else, we'll throw in some clouds here. Now the reason I leave these white areas is because the, you know, the, the more paint that you have over here, this blue color, and you try to add something white, it's going to mix with that blue very fast. If we're, you know, putting the white over pretty much white, it's not going to disappear on us very quickly. All right, so we're going to take it scrape up a little bit, and maybe we'll come on this side and just just smush it onto the canvas, however it goes. We don't want it to break like a, like a mountain would, you know, or a bit of dirt. You're trying to get that break look. You just want to smush it, be really rough. And we're going to talk about this, and hopefully I'll be able to help whoever's having trouble with the knife when we do the mountain, okay? I've figured out a way to explain it, a way to explain what we do with the knife and how the paint grabs the canvas. Like, it was very difficult to put into words until I had this little epiphany, and I was like, well, if I can explain it like that, then it should be easy for you to understand, and then your knife work should get better. Okay, so we're going to take our one-inch brush. We're going to come down down at a 45 degree angle on the canvas, just using the front, the, the top bristles, right? And we're just gonna very lightly, very lightly make little soft, little circles, just very light. It's gotta be so light. Oh my God, it's gotta be light. <clears throat> so if it isn't light, then you're gonna blend it all away, right? Now we've got this cool looking little bit of cloud up in our sky. And to me, maybe to you guys, you can't see all the details inside of it. Can you see, babe? Just looks very whitish, right? Yeah. To me, I can see details right here, but I want you guys to be able to see them as well. So I'm gonna grab up some of the dark paint on both sides of the brush, just pulling in from the bottom where we've already deposited it. And then we're gonna come in and just sort of kind of decide where we want a few little shad in there. that will just give it a little bit more depth, right? And again, we're just very lightly with the top corner of the brush, just gonna mix them up a little bit. And then you get these cool little Little differences, little what, babe? Little differences in color. Color. We're gonna come up with a t-shirt. It's literally gonna say differences in color because I say it so much. And uh, and my wife, we were, who, who were we talking about it with? I can't remember. We were talking about it with someone and they were like, oh, Josh's catchphrases. Oh, it was my sister we were talking about it with. Yeah. My catchphrases. And uh, the first one that came out of London's I was make a mess, which is the tagline for, for paint with Josh, right? And uh, then the next one was differences in color. And I was like, oh my God, I do say that a lot. Like, a, a really yeah, a lot. don't cover the darkness. <laughs> Save the dark. Don't paint all the black. I don't know. My, my blue is trying to run off of my palette here, guys. Okay. 
What's next on our agenda to talk about, hun? Where's our list? I don't know. I was just thinking about that. We made an entire list, and the list has it's, not made uh, it to the life. It's downstairs, oh. I think, on the couch. All right. I can't remember what... Oh, we were going to talk about the classes. That's what was the next thing. So, okay. yeah, grab the list, and then we'll talk about the classes. So, the classes, guys, that I just released, right? We're going to make a change to the pricing on those classes. Now, but I'm going to tell you what happened with the company, okay? And, and why you should choose my classes through my own site and my YouTube page versus trying to find them anywhere else, okay? So this company reached out to me and said, we found you on YouTube, and uh, we really like the way your videos are. We really like how you, how you explain stuff, and, you know, we want to buy your likeness and, you know, give you a licensing deal so we'll, we'll sell your classes, and then we'll make you, you know, thousands of dollars a month, right? Like $50,000 a month. And like my head's like, 50 grand, okay, sign me up, right? So I do all this work. They're like, okay, they give me no guidance at all. No guidance. And in my head, they came to me, they found me through what I do here, so I'm gonna make the videos look like this, but a little bit more instructional, right? A little bit less jokey, and a little bit more, you know, really focusing on certain areas or certain things. And you can see we're just dropping color on with the palette knife, okay? And the more you mix it up on this blue, look at just how fast it wants to go blue and disappear. It's much darker than this one over here, right? So yeah, they say, they, they give me no guidance. I can't get anyone on the phone because I work the same times that they work, right? So I can't talk to anybody. No one's even looking at what I'm uploading into the drive to make sure that it's the right thing or, you know, what they're looking for. So I just do my classes and I knock out, you know, 12 hour to almost two hour long videos because I want to give you guys a lot of value, right? I don't want you to buy the videos. And in my head, I'm like, oh, they're going to be launching them on some site. You know, and you guys are going to get it and maybe get to download them and save them. No, that's not what was going to happen at all. They were going to take, all right, we're going to get, sorry, just, well, this is sort of still an instructional painting video. Okay, we're going to take blue and black because that's really all we have is blue and black. We're going to mix them up. And think. So I'm thinking, and a little bit of white, sorry. I'm thinking you guys are going to be able to download my videos, keep them on your computer, watch them for, you know, as long as you want, and that would be a cool deal. Well, it turns out they're just going to post them to some other site that is a subscription site. Okay, we're going to drag a little bit, just a little bit of the knife right here. So they want to post to some subscription site, right, that's going to get you to pay either an upfront yearly cost in the hundreds of dollars, or a monthly cost of $32.99 a month, right? And, and it's not just for my videos. You would get um, anyone, anyone that's on there, any teacher instructing on this site, you get access to their videos. So it's not really just me, you know what I mean? And I'm like, well, like I know my people, my fans, my great and wonderful fans, you know, they're, they're not expecting this. This isn't what I've been telling everybody is coming down the line, right? I haven't been saying, okay, guys, I'm going to go get you to subscribe to some other site and pay, you know, a buttload of money. That's not my deal. I don't, I didn't like that. So without them, without any guidance, that's, I make... <clears throat> that's also, just to clear it up for some people, that's also not how it was... So oh yeah, no, they, they explained it. I, I've got all the emails. They explained it a certain way. Oh, you just give us raw video and we'll chop it up. And then as soon as you sign the contract, the contract says you provide edited video and all this other crap that you didn't initially uh, hear about, right? They didn't, they didn't decide to, to say that. They told me, you know, yeah, just we've got a whole editing team. You just give us your videos. I'm like, sweet. I do that all the time anyway. I'll just chuck them over to you guys. That'd be less that I have to do. Hundreds of hours of raw footage we have. Right. Well, we've got tons of raw footage. Ton, and now tons of, I mean, you know, all the videos I've ever put on YouTube, I have all the raw footage that I could have uploaded to them. But nevertheless, right? So I finished the last painting, which is actually this one right back here. The one I just posted in the Bob Ross group got like 330 likes. Thank you guys. I love you so much. Okay. But I, I just had finished that last painting the night before and I'm in the process of editing the video. I'm halfway through editing and I get an email from the company, the president of the company and says, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, you, we're going to have to go, we're going to have to cancel your contract basically. 
for a bunch of, you know, well, it's break time down at work. State flower guys, if you're watching. So, uh, what was I saying? God damn it. Just about how they approached you and. Yeah, so then he emails me and he goes, oh, we're going right, to right. we're gonna have to cancel your contract. Terminate. No yeah, terminate, terminate your contract because of some inner workings of the company. And, you know, we really, you know, I, we, we wish you the best. Blah, blah, blah. Bunch of nonsense. Okay. Bunch of corporate nonsense. No real answer to, as to why you're, you're killing. So I email the guy back immediately, like pleading, like, dude, I'm finished. Like, I'm ready. All my stuff is going to be edited by today and it will be in the drive and, you Which know, just just take a look at it at least before you decide to throw it out. You know what Which, I mean? Like, by the way, they hadn't given us a deadline. <clears throat> yeah, there was they no deadline. Hadn't, they hadn't said when they wanted to launch the classes, when yeah. Josh They're, would upload footage, it wouldn't be verified by the other side. Nobody looked at it. Like, I went through the Google Drive as soon as Josh got the notification to down, like, take the content back. And... Nobody's ever looked at anything you've put in there. The only thing they looked at was the coloring book. Right, yeah, because that's the only, that's the only thing, thing they asked me about. Everything else, they, they left up to me to decide, you know, what it was going to be. So I go through the, the, you know, two weeks every night, two weeks. And there was, a, you know, you don't, hit your, you don't hit a home run every single time. So there was a couple paintings that went for an hour and 40 minutes that didn't make the cut. Like, the, the painting didn't look good at the end. I wanted to put out my very best work for for these classes, so you guys had an extreme value. You were like, "Oh my God!" Like 15 to 17 hours of deep instructional video with 12 separate paintings that you'd get by the time you were done. So they they email me and he's like, you know, blah blah blah, corporate bullshit, no real answer because of whatever reason. So I am like completely gutted at work, right? People notice that I am visibly shaken because I've spent all this time, all this time and energy trying to create the best thing that I've ever put out. And for some, and somehow I did it it's every single night for two weeks, going to bed at one in the morning, waking up at six to go to work, like every single day. So I'm gutted, I'm completely like depressed, super depressed. Like, what are we going to do now, babe? You know, like, we've got all this stuff. It's valuable footage. So what are we going to do? And we decided, screw them, right? We found out what they were going to do, where they were going to post it, and just how much they were going to rip me off since I can go on the same site and post it myself, right? So they tricked me into thinking I needed them when, in fact, I, I've already signed up for Skillshare. I've, I'm going to have little separate modules, you know, and that's another thing they never explained, modules. Like, it was such a bad deal. So I said, okay. Dean's here. Oh, what's up, Dean? <laughs> well, you know, whatever. Dean, I love you, buddy. I, I wish you luck, Dean. I really do. So, uh... <clears throat> so is Alex ah, you, and you, John Christ. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What was I saying? Can someone who was paying attention... Some of us get stoned in the morning and we forget what we're talking about easily. Modules. Yeah, so with no guidance, so, it, you know, whatever. So they now we're going to have on Skillshare, which you can pay for, right? Or you can watch them through my YouTube site, which we're going to talk about a change in the price. And whoever has bought the, the, the sites, as uh, the classes as they are right now, you're going to get a refund and then you sign up for a... A lower amount, okay? I'm really, I really want to blast these a-holes out of the water, right? I want to do it just out of, out of, just principle, like, of how they, they tried to do me, okay? Which, by the way, Josh would have <clears throat> only have made 50% uh, of the net proceeds after they take their cut, which isn't... Right, which isn't, isn't specified. from the beginning. So they're like, okay, you know, we'll, we'll market them, we'll pay for all the ads, and then you get, you know, 50% or 40%, whatever it was, of the end profit, right? Well, they could say that I got 100 classes, but the cost to market them was 99 classes, so here's 15 bucks because we're taking the other half. You know what I mean? Like, you never know. And I was like, this is, it's really shady what they did. Like, if they didn't tell me this 
before? What else are they not telling me? Right? That's my thought. Like, what else are you hiding if you are, are going to be this deceitful right off the bat? So, not going to mention the company's name. Not going to mention anybody who is also signed with the company. That is your journey. You know, I'm, I'm doing my own deal over here. I think I can do it myself better than they would have done it for me. And it's only out of spite because of how they treated me, right? It's just horrible. So, now you can see, since we've been painting, we're leaving areas of light, dark, light, dark, shadow, shadow, light colored shadow. Differences, right? Differences in color. That's what we're trying to do. So all we're blabbing. If, if anybody wants me to shut up, just tell me to shut up and paint. But I figured you guys wanted to hear what happened and why. Okay, so now on YouTube, I listed the classes. Now, YouTube did this for me, okay? When I did the whole membership thing, they chose the price of all the different things. And now the more I think about it, the more I don't like all these different levels, right? Like if you want to pay for the channel, whatever you pay, that's what you should get everything. You get the all access. So what I'm going to do is anybody that signed up for the $30 a month one, you're going to get your money back, right? As soon as I cancel it at the end of this uh, live after we're done, we'll cancel that. I'll restructure the, the memberships to one price at $7.99 and then you'll have, you know, $7.99 a month and you'll get my videos for as long as you want them, right? For as long as you pay for them, you'll be able to have those class, you know, deep instructional videos. Now remember, I'm always going to put out free videos every week. But if you want to, you know, pay the money to get the extra content, it is available for you. Can you talk about snow breaking on your mountains? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, then we're going to do, we'll do another mountain. We'll just do another mountain. That's fine. Yeah, Andy, we'll do another mountain. And then I'm going to tell you my epiphany about, <laughs> it helps if your brush is soft when you start. There we go. Okay, as you can see, we're bringing, we're coming up into the color, bringing some down, turning our brush, going this way because we came this way with our knife, right? Just helping kind of hide the mountain in this cloud of mist. You can even go above your horizon over here and make it where it's difficult to see where the horizon is. It looks really cool. Now, if this were a, a full color palette, I would put some brown rocks in there where the deep areas are out on the edge. You always get that bit of rock that always warms up sooner than everything else, and so the snow melts around me, becomes bare. Really neat. Okay, now we have all this fog at the base, right? Make little circles with it. It's just like, just how we do our clouds. Just barely grabbing it, little circles. I like to do mine in this kind of, you know, shape, just so it's not a straight line. Hate straight lines. All right, did we efficiently sufficiently talk about the classes they're going to be 7.99 they're going to be available to anyone who pays for the channel and there will be no membership levels that just it irks me i don't like if you if you want to take your hard-earned money and pay you get everything right i'm not we're not doing levels anymore so the people that did get the the level 30 uh, the level 3 29.99 you're going to get your money back as soon as we cancel it right you'll get all the money back and then just sign in at the $7.99, I'll save you, you know, what, 23 bucks a month? And we're just going to blow these And obviously, if you can't, out if of you water. can't do it until the money's refunded or however YouTube do it when we press cancel, that's totally fine. Like, yeah, you don't have to go right. I mean, it's, yeah, I, I feel bad bad. that, you know, we tried it at that price and didn't think about this earlier. I wanted to make it cheaper than, than what they would charge on their site. And now we're gonna make it miles cheaper, like gigantically cheaper. Okay, again, when we're doing the mountain, we're pushing really hard. It's only when we come to do the snow that you wanna be very light, right? I'm smushing it in as hard as I can get the knife to go in there. And then I don't wanna cover up all of the bit of fog up here in the mountain. I like how it's nice and mysterious. Right, we don't have to go all the way to the edge. And then we'll drop in little bits of the color like randomly and as our brush picks it up, we'll create the, the shape of our mountain. There we go, I'm gonna pull it down. Just saving the, dark, the, the top. The top can be nice and dark, right? And nice and thick paint. You don't wanna go outside of your lines is the thing. Okay, pull it down over here. And now you just see, just from those random colors that we dropped, there's like a little shelf up here or something. And if you didn't like it, you could really blend it out until it was nice and soft and shape your mountain the way that you wanna shape it. Okay, maybe this guy comes here, pull it down, just nice and soft. Like, I never like grabbing it really hard 
because you know you may get, may grow too far. So just start out softly. All right, we're gonna bring this guy down in front of the other ones, and then we'll we'll sort of have a a kind of paint by number situation where we'll, we'll, the canvas is gonna tell us where to fill in all of these highlights and stuff. All right, and pull it down, pull it down. Now we got all this fog. Again, at the base of our mountain, it's kind of, you can't really tell where it sits, right? Look at that other mountain in the back. It's fantastic. The clouds look great, and looks great. Okay, now we're gonna go over how we break the snow. <clears throat> so this is a big bit of mountain, so I'm gonna make up a large amount of shadow paint, which we can save to the side and use at other times, right? You wanna make it sort of sort of marbled but not really right you got all these different colors don't really want a whole lot of white because the white is our highlight color so like that now as you have all these different things you can cut through in different places and find all these different colors on your knife okay make sure your paint's nice and flat right take up a good chunk of it now we have a roll okay now if you imagine if you imagine oh, let's see show you how to do it okay say this is the roll on the end of our knife it's not a circle right but it is this is better <laughs> okay say this is the roll of paint on the end of our knife our knife's up here okay and this is the chunk of paint that's on the end when we're going to touch the mountain I don't want the blade of the knife to touch the mountain right you just want that roll of paint to literally roll as you go down and then as you get down to the bottom pull your hand away from the canvas because you don't want to hear the sound of your knife on the canvas you just want to let that little roll roll out until it's empty and then when your knife is empty you go back you get another little roll and you let it roll out and every time you hear your knife scrape the canvas or even just the slightest amount touch the canvas you are done you need more so go back and get more Okay, now we're gonna throw this guy. If all of our light's coming from here, that means some of him is gonna be in the shadow. So again, I just wanna roll the paint and let it break, okay? okay. Can you guys see that? Keys, uh, when man. we Keys. When we do it with the white, will you be able to see it better? Keys Mans says, is that a dragon in your sky? It's like this. <laughs> no, it looks, it looks like it. I didn't put it anyway, but if that's what it looks like, then that is the painting gods taking over and uh, and helping us okay again all I'm doing is taking the roll of paint until it is flat and now I need more we'll go back depending on how big of a section you need to cover you can have a bit like a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch roll of paint okay so now our lights gonna go here so now our shadows are gonna change right we've got two different mountains right here so now our shadows are gonna be there and you if you're if your knife is almost literally touching the canvas right it's touching it okay that's how close you want to be and how lightly you want to hold your knife okay leave room for your shadows come in and just drag it down in sort of a quick motion that's how you get the cool randomness right if you push it let's say like this and again we'll show you this with the with the light colors as well the, with the white so everyone will be able to see it right if you push it real slow, you're not going to get the cool randomness and the different size chunks of paint that make these paintings textured, right? I love textured. If you can't feel your paint when it's dry and run your fingers over it and feel any differences, then you're not using enough paint, my friend. My guy. My guy. Like, you have to be, especially the big, thick trees we paint. Do you guys paint like me? Obviously, that's why you watch this channel. You should be able to feel the thickness, you know, like this tree back here. I can feel all the little details in it, right? So you got to have it thick. And then don't see, I, I almost did it. I almost just didn't listen to anything. Don't go back over it and try to fix anything. Okay. If it doesn't take it, it doesn't want it. The canvas will literally tell you how to paint as long as you don't overdo it to death. Okay. It doesn't tell me how to paint. And again, look at the size of this white chunk of paint that's on the knife, okay? It's a big, thick, messy bit. Now, I want to grab the canvas with just the edge of the paint and go down, and that will pull the paint off of the knife. You don't want the knife to touch the canvas. You want the paint on the knife to touch the canvas, okay? And you pull it down, 
in different things, different ways. Okay, now I can start to hear, you guys might not be able, but I can hear that now my knife is out of paint because I'm touching the canvas. Okay, that should help some of us that are struggling with the knife to kind of imagine how to hold it. I hope, okay, I hope that's, that helps. You don't want your knife to touch the canvas. You want that chunk of paint to stay in between as your knife touches the canvas, okay? Let's see, maybe we got another little bit coming down here. And again, it'll some of the times it'll go away quickly depending on how much you have and you go back, All right? But it'll help it break and it'll help it look more realistic. Very straight, right? If yours is on a table, hold it flat and do it. If it's on a 45 degree angle, hold it on a 45 degree angle and do it. You almost want the butt of your knife to be touching your canvas on the way down. You'll hear this all the time. And I'll hit my own canvas all the time on my easel because the knife is so close and I'm holding it so lightly, right? All right. I hope that helped everybody. What's next on the list to talk about, huh? Oh, shoot. Again, don't try to cover everything, right? You want to have bits of our original mountain paint shining through. Okay. We have... Uh... Oh, uh, when are we launching on Skillshare? So we should be... I've already got one video broken down, but we should be ready to go on Skillshare on, in October. Okay. And again, I... You know, Skillshare is very much like a payable YouTube, okay? So you guys pay for, you know, it would be, uh, what's it, $32.99 or $14.99, but you have to pay all 12 $14.99s right up front, right? And then you not only get me, but you'll get other, other artists that are on that site as well. You can scroll through the videos. It's very much like YouTube. It's not just my paintings, which is what I thought it was going to be and why I did them a certain way. And members in here that have that have seen the class videos, like please tell them how much, tell everyone the differences in the class videos versus the videos that we do here every Sunday and on Wednesday and stuff. Please, like somebody, these classes are gonna be worth it, guys. So what I'm gonna do is charge $7.99, which is like the mid range of the levels that YouTube creates on its own. I'm just gonna delete the first level and the third level and we'll just do $7.99, and if you pay the $7.99, you have access to everything, every single thing on the channel. <clears throat> From all the, the little emojis to the live chats that we're going to be doing with the members only and all sorts of stuff. We'll have, like, members only, you know, cocktail hour with Josh, right? That sounds cool. It does sound cool. And we'll sit, and uh, you guys can ask questions, and we'll drink, and... Allison says... Smoke, whatever. <laughs> Allison says, um, uh, when I do that with the paint, I get a large blob, but then yeah. it won't break as I drag it down. So it might be due to the angle of your knife, okay? And like initially when I dropped it here, I had a large glob as well. And then I kept very lightly working it. And you might be going too slow. Go faster. Make that little thing. Try not to touch your canvas with your knife. Just deposit that that little bit of paint as fast as you can. And you'll get some thick, some thin, some thick all over the place. Like this one's very thick, right? So if I don't like it, you see the angle of the knife, right? We're not straight on now. I want it to go away, I'm scraping it. And then I can even take the same paint, chuck it back in there and make it look different, right? But you just gotta be fast with it. Looks really neat, I like that. Okay, we're gonna come down again. Go up into this guy, trying not trying to get a little bit of mist in between the two bits of mountain, right? In case anyone's wondering what I'm doing, those that have submitted to the raffle, I am writing your name oh. down on a tiny piece of paper. Excellent. Yes, the raffle is going to be at the end of the show. So, if you've put in for the raffle, one dollar will win you the painting. So you still have time if you wanted to do that. You can see again how I'm not making my fog at all the same level, right? It comes up, it comes down. It's never just this straight razor blade of fog. 
Okay, we're gonna scrape up all that blue shadowy stuff that we made and just make it darker. Grab our black, our blue. Dean at, again. Dean at Scheme, Scene Scape Shop says, just a heads up, I think when you changed your name, it might have affected some subscribers. I was subscribed previously, but just realized it said I wasn't. Uh, well, I haven't had that from anyone else. It was very much a seamless transition. Uh, but I'll be, you guys know me, I promote like crazy, so I'll have <laughs> the new link. I've already gone back and edited older posts uh, that I posted with, uh, so the new link can be in there. There we go. Just a little bit of difference, right? But yeah, I'll be promoting like crazy now with all the, the new stuff. Okay, so we made up a new pile of blue and black and uh, just a little bit of white. And then we'll come down in, kind of wiggle it, right? You guys see how we do this? Just wiggle it down, wiggle it in, right? Just like that, show all the cameras. Getting it on both sides so we have a fair amount of paint and a very sharp knife-like edge. Now we'll come in, let's see, why don't we go over here from the side and just start tapping up into our foggy areas that we created, right? Not in super into the white, you don't wanna to have too much fog in between your trees, right? But like this, we came down, came up, came down, Okay, well, and that's what my fog looked like if you couldn't tell. That's the angle that it was moving, and that's how I like it. I don't like a nice, straight, boring, straight bit of, you know, anything, whether it be mountain or tree line, right? Even if your tree line is very much, you know, all of your trees are just the same size as the, as the fan brush, and, you know, they are the same very dark color. There's no differences, right, guys? Uh, Deborah Hoffman, it's her first time watching. Hi, Deborah. What, what does Deborah have to ask? Uh, Deborah wants to know how she donates a dollar for the raffle. Okay, so you can go to my PayPal. Um, babe, we might have to put the, the uh, PayPal link in the comments. And then you can enter to win. Uh, it's either PayPal, we have Venmo, um, we have Cash App. So whatever is easier for you, whichever one you have, we have a way to accept your your money. You can even pay straight through Facebook. Are you watch, watching on Facebook? Yeah. So uh, ask, how did Allison do it? I think Allison or Ann sent me money straight through Facebook Messenger. Um, but that was just to me. That wasn't to the company. So, uh, it wasn't to the paint with Josh. It was just to, it's just to old Josh. So we can put the PayPal link out. It should be like paypal.me slash happy little landscape, right? No S at the end. Little, happy little landscape. That's what the company and my channel and everything used to be called was happy little landscapes. And now we are paid with Josh. Yeah. Is, your, <laughs> is your Venmo still under happy little landscapes? Uh, I didn't change it from yesterday, so. Hey. There we go. You can see I'm, I'm kind of going sideways on these, and it gives it this gloss look like reflections do, you know, when we're painting the reflections. There we go. We're going to do that same little, little scene just on a smaller canvas for you guys that I put out the other day. This one is going to be very similar to the, the uh, one of my classes, the last class, the Module 6, where we do, you know, anything and everything. There we go that we've been learning throughout all the other ones. Okay, now you can see I want my next bit of fog to go almost to the tip tops of my trees, okay? So we're taking all, all that, bringing it down, and just blending all that color down, right? To make it soft, and that way our next layer of paint will go onto it. If you try to put your big thick trees in, then you don't blend them and make them soft, and then you try to put more big thick trees, that thick paint is just gonna clash with all the other thick paint, right? It works one of two ways. A thick paint will stick to a very thin layer of paint, or a very thin layer of paint will stick to a very thick paint, okay? So we put the thick paint on, then we soften it, so another thick layer can go on, then we soften it, and then another thick layer, then soften it, right? And leaving tiny space in between the softenings, Right? That could be like a like a horror movie. The softenings. <laughs> the softenings. Okay. 
Now, and also the reason why we blend it down is because now this color, since we only have three colors today, we're using the same colors everywhere, right? There's nothing to bounce off of. So this dark color that we initially put on is now very dark compared to this lighter color as we blended it out and it blended with all the liquid white that's on the canvas and got a lighter color hue. Now I'm gonna go back in with the same colors, right? Because we only have two with white. So I'm gonna come back in and do another thing of forest just almost to the top. So you have this smallest, smallest bit of fog. You don't want, this is what you don't want. Let me show you. You don't wanna have your next bit of trees start down too far at the end of your fog. Then you're gonna to have too much fog, right? It doesn't make any sense. It's too much distance, it's almost like, you know, we're standing looking at everything on the floor, except for our fog, we're somehow way up here looking down and can see a whole lot more, right? You have to think about where I place myself standing, maybe waist height at the bottom of the canvas, right? So from my waist, this is everything that I can see right here, okay? I've painted paintings where we've been up on top of a hill looking down, so you see more, you know, water, more beat, more right? You see it, you see it differently. Here, we know there's very, very, very thick forest, right? Maybe two layers, maybe three, maybe, maybe a mile of forest in between us and the mountain back there but we've only painted two sections and it makes it look like 10 billion trees, okay? But this layer of fog that we're just trying to save just the top of, which is again why we fogged it up to the top of these trees in the back, is so that the distance won't look so crazily different between them, right? These bits of trees are very close together. So we need a very close line of fog in between them. There's not a lot of space in between them to allow so much of a cloud to form, right? Again, we've done the same little shape that we did in the first one, and then we're just taking the paint, bringing it down a little bit, and you, now you can see that even with three colors, right? Black, blue, black, and white, we've created, what, one, two with the clouds, three, four, five, six layers of depth already with just three colors. You don't need a full color palette in order to paint a beautiful depth Hang on, depth filled scene, right? It's like the depth. It's hard. It's like oh. Sally sells seashells. A depth, depth filled. Try saying that at home. Somebody say it out loud. Depth filled. It's hard to get the and the to go at the same time. All right, now again, we're going to come in. Same brush. We haven't washed a single brush so far, okay? Have not washed a single brush. And we're going to see if we can do it all without washing the brush once. Okay, again, just softening it, hitting it at a downward 45, pressing the top like this, and then every time we hit, it's blending all these out a thousand times with every single bristle that's in here. Okay, so we're gonna bring, and if you want yours, yours is maybe too thick, right? Maybe you get too much white, uh, too much dark color on there. Just come back in with a little bit of white on your brush. Okay, it'll make it lighter. This thing's about to fall out of the easel. Keep bashing on it. This is a really a painting where you can take out your frustration from your boss or say, you know, some boner canceled your contract and you can take out your frustration on the canvas, right? Uh, Deborah Hoffman, it's her first time yep. watching. She just sent in five entries to the rack. Thank you, Deborah. We'll show you what painting you guys are raffling for. Is this beauty right here? It's a 12 by 16. It's got a nice cabin, a little frozen pond. It's almost like it was springtime and a spring storm came through and just blasted the area with snow. Got a lot of detail in the cabin. Got your little smoke coming out of your chimney. All this, you can feel it all. It's very thick and textured. And that's again why I love painting like this. So it's this painting that we're auctioning off. I will personalize it and sign it to you on the back to whoever wins it and then we'll get it shipped off to you. So, but only if you subscribe, Deborah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Once we get your entry, we'll ship it off to you if you win. And we'll be doing the line drawing at the end of this painting, which, I don't know, maybe another 30 minutes. Okay, well, all entries currently are in. <sighs> so, okay. these are the... Just now, in, hold on, just in case people don't believe. Here, let me see them. 
that I really just wrote down <laughs> everybody's name. Let's see. Get it out to all the. I Look just want everybody these. to know that I we really, got, really, 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 yeah, right? really. We got everything. Roberto's got a few in here. Because Anne's got a few. Annette, Suzanne. Annette, Suzanne. All these things. And then we're going to draw one out. At the end, we'll show everybody the names so it'll be nice and fair, right? If we could, and, uh, uh, if we could limit future raffles to anyone with only three letters <laughs> so in their that, name. Yeah, right? So you don't like, have to write so much? Yeah, I have Annette, Suzanne, Yeah, all Roberta. these long names. That's funny. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to use the micro fan brush. These are the ones you guys can find in my Amazon shop, or if you just search Amazon. If you, if you go through my shop, you normally save a few dollars, and, uh, and then I make a couple pennies, right? So... Just very lightly with the same two colors. I don't need it to be very thick. All right. Again, we're only using black and, and blue, so we're just I just mix them up right underneath there because they're all going to get muddled anyway. Okay, and I just want to add, like, I want to make like a big boss man tree that lives out here, right? He's bigger than all the rest of them, and he's sitting up here in front. So we're going to come down into our little bit and then come to the side. You can see the angle that I hold the brush at, right? It's not straight on when we're at the very top. Or, you know, like this, or up way, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it, we're, we're turning it to the side just so we can touch the very corner of the brush and make the smallest little mark, right? Just a corner, 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 corner. And then the more we come down, now the more we can use the full bristles of the brush to make that tree shape, right? It doesn't have to be very thick. You want it to be kind of thin like these ones are back here. It doesn't need a whole lot of detail. You just want to be able to tell that all of these little hash marks are pine trees, right? And we do that with having two big pine trees. This is one. Again, I'm gonna come back in and do that fog, same way we've been doing it all, right? Make the, the thing nice and soft. That way you can't tell how far the forest goes down. Maybe it's all the way down here is the bottom. Maybe it's somewhere up in here, or you, know, you never know. You can't see it, right? That's why I make fog. I love painting these mysterious things that make you look and think, what the heck lives back underneath there? What does it look like that I can't see? That's what makes your brain hurt. Like, oh, I want to, and that's what makes the paintings have a lot of depth. You know, what's over these first layer of trees in that bit of fog? What's over the set, you know, what does the, the bottom of the mountain look like? What does this look like behind that mountain? And then what do the clouds look like behind that bit of mountain, right? That's depth and mystery. Makes you wonder what's going on. And that's how we like to paint around here. And you guys do too, and that's why you watch the show, right? Okay, let's put another one back here. Maybe a little bit taller. And again, he's gonna be darker. He's gonna go right over the, the bits in the back. By the way, John Krasniak is killing it with links. On Thank YouTube. you, John, for the links. John always kills it with the links. I know, Dean said he needs himself a John Krasniak. Yeah, right, no, he's mine. John is mine. No one else can have him. He's too good. Okay, there we go. I put a poll out on YouTube for anyone on Facebook that wants to vote that says, do you love the name change? Yeah, that's good. Do you guys like the name change over to Paint with Josh? Or, you know, are you missing Happy Little Landscapes? I will not be offended either which way. It's going to stay Paint with Josh. <laughs> so no matter what your answer is, you know, I'm not going to be offended. Don't worry. So we have 83%. 83% like the name change? Yes. Nice. And 17% say no. Oh, they don't like the name change. No. I like the, the, the weird comments I was getting yesterday from people like, hmm, interesting, why the name change, right? At least that's how I read it. Like, they thought I, maybe I got sued by Bob Ross, Inc., or you know, had to change the name for legal reasons when it's 100% not true at all. We've been literally talking about Paint with Josh and why we were to change it and just how big, you know, Kevin Hill is and, and Yovette and Paintings by Justin. They're all Paint with or Paintings by. And if I want to get there someday, I got to do the same, right? And it was so nerve wracking because, you know, again, I've been able to hide behind Happy Little Landscapes as like a third person. And now, all of a sudden, it's got my name in it, my face is everywhere, like... Your 
face was everywhere before. And I'm the I'm the brand now, which is a scary thing. You know what I mean? Like, my, my self doubt is kicking in. Brand of Joshua. Self doubt. Okay, we're washing all the brushes because we're gonna get into some light colors. So I want to have nice clean brushes. We only have one light color, and that's white. Okay, and we have not used any other brushes than what I showed you in the beginning, except I have two two-inch brushes is all. You know what I mean? Same thing. So, well, we haven't used our liner brush yet, which we, we will. We will use the liner brush, that's for certain. Faux show. Okay, what else do we have to talk about on our list, huh? We've never... We've never done a, like, planned out a show. You guys know me. It's very much just let it fly. And whatever happens, happens. And however it looks, it looks. Right? So, uh, like, planned out a show. You guys know me. It's very much just let it fly. And whatever happens, happens. And however it looks, it looks. Right? So, let's We see. made a plan last night because we had a lot of stuff to talk about. And we I did. feel like death. So, I yeah, can't London is ill. Everything. London doesn't feel well, guys. So, give her some love. Um, I do that. What are you doing in November, babe? Oh, in November, okay. I will be painting not in the studio, but painting live at the the Apothecarium Dispensary here in Las Vegas. That is the sister, you know, it's the dispensary of the company that I work for currently. Um, and all throughout the month of November, my artwork is going to be all over the walls, hopefully selling quickly. Uh, they do sell, they, they feature artists a lot. And as soon as they realized that I was a painter when I first started there, they were like, we have a couple people in front of you, but we're going to get you in and uh, see if I can't shift some artwork over there. We may broadcast live from there. I don't know about the releases, if people are on video or anything. So it may be an edited video that we'll release, but it'll be a cool thing. And we'll get pictures and all sorts of stuff. It'll be a cool little event. So if you're a local Las Vegas, or local Las Vegan, um, Vegan. then come down to the Apothecary on Buffalo and Sahara, okay? At some point in November. Yeah, at some day in November, I will release date. But Thank no, you. go by there anyway, well, and, yeah. uh, and and like, what's their, their Instagram? It's uh, like, can you look up their no. Instagram real quick? Apoth? It's either Apoth or, you know, Apothecary LV. I think something it's like Apothecary LV. I think so too. But let's check. All right, now we're going to make up a cabin in this one, right? Ooh, you can see we're, we're running out of room. So if you've run out of room because these grew too much, yes, hon? It's not. It's apothecarium underscore. Oh, LB. so apothecarium, right? Apoth, apo the car -ium, okay? Apothecarium. And uh, underscore LV for Las Vegas. Give them a follow. They're going to be promoting me. We're going to do cross-promotion deals, try to get a bunch of people to come down there and watch me. Act a fool all day, right? <laughs> Be eight hours worth of painting that day. Oh my god, we may go live like six times. <laughs> all right, now we'll make a little cabin shape, okay? Now pay attention to the angles of the shape, okay? The angles are most important. So on our downward angle, right? Because our house is not facing directly at us, it's kind of tweaked to the side a little bit. So our downward angle over here, and just pick a spot, Josh, and roll. Okay, our downward angle is going to go like this. Now we're going to pull down very slow, pushing very hard, covering all that dark, any color behind it, right? This is not when you want your snow to break. This is, you know, very much we're filling it in. We're providing the, the shadow color. Okay, again, going to pull down very slow, kind of filling all that space in on this 45 degree angle downwards, right? That's why the knife is shaped like this. So you can literally go up, put the flat, the short flat side down, make that flat, make this an angle, like it's shaped like that for a reason. Now we're gonna change the angle just a little bit. Okay, you saw we did two knife lengths on the right hand side, side by side, right? To make it easy. That way you don't have to guess. Now we're only gonna do one knife length on the other side, but the angle is gonna be much steeper. Okay, so we're gonna turn it up like this and then pull down. Just like that. And all we want to do, and it, it looks like an odd house, right? It's longer on one side, shorter on the other side, and then all filled in. And that's how you want it to look. And it's so we can make our house look 3D, okay? 
And then don't worry about how far you come down. And again, you can see the fog around the house, over the house, because we almost went to the very tip tops of the trees, right? If you had a bunch of thick tree down here, all this thick textured paint, it would be very difficult to get your knife to stick. You're gonna be smooshing all over that other paint. It's not good. So make your fog and make it, you know, tall. All right, now we're gonna take a little bit more, get a little bit of black, scrape it up, and now we're gonna change. Remember, our house has come down, right? But it's it's not, this is more of the angle like this, just so you guys can see where we're going for it, right? It's on a downward slope, okay? The front of the house on a downward slope. It's like this guy didn't know how to build anything, right? That's what it looks like now. Okay, now we're gonna come sort of on a, a like a four degree upward angle, very flat angle, okay? Only up here. We're gonna pull down, pull down. You can get like three, three knife lengths out of the side of your house, right? Maybe two and a half. Pull it down, just fill it in. All you gotta do, fill it in, because we're gonna cover over it anyway. And you can see we've only gone up about halfway up the side of our house. And that's because we're going to come lay down our snow, okay? And we're going to need to get out some more white paint, I think. So I like to imagine we've got our, our hill over here, right? Three knife lengths down about two and a half. And then we'll fill all that in with snow. Right? It got real cold and it, it covered poor mountain man's house out here. In this thick snowfall. Now, careful when you go down and touch your dark. It's going to want to bring it back up and make those lights dark as well. All right, bring it down, bring it down. Nice straight lines. Pulling it down. And every time you pull it down, you're adding another little bit of, of depth to that uh, bit of white roof, right? Now it looks like it's missing something and that's because it is, it's over here. Now I'm putting my white over the black, right? Not on the top of it because it doesn't want to stick, it's very thick. So we're going to put it over the black side and then stick it out just a little ways beyond our side of our house right here. All right? And now we have this kind of diagonal shaped three dimensional house. Now. You're like, how are you gonna highlight a house like that without brown, right? You've gotta, you need to have, oh, I need it, what the hell? You gotta have brown in order to make a cabin, right, Josh? Well, no, you don't, you really don't. Because we can do it right here without it, right? Okay, remember, we only have three colors. So we're gonna take that same color that we made the dark shape out of with, right? All this darkness. And again, doesn't matter what it looks like underneath at all, okay? Don't worry about what it looks like. We're gonna take our white, a fair amount of white, like a good amount of it, and a little bit of that darker color, and just kind of mix them in until it's kind of this light gray, right? Maybe take a little bit more blue. Throw the blue in there and just change it up a little bit, right? So it's not dark, it's not white, it's sort of grayish, bluish. And then we're going to come in, same angle, right? Pull it down, and this is where you sort of want it to break. you got to be gentle. got to be gentle. Then you get these old boards out there with all this different, you know, look to it, right? It looks fantastic like that. And don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Okay, we're going to take a little bit of that dark... Mix it in with just the bottom of the pile over here and then use that for this side because it's got to be a little bit darker on one side than the other. Okay, pull it down. Now we got these really cool bits of, of frozen wood. Right? It's so cold. Then maybe we'll come in and just make beams inside of our cabin. Right? These are all the planks of wood and you'll get all these cool little bits and technique. It's fantastic, guys. The effects are lovely. Okay, now I'm gonna, if I want to add a door, for me, I don't like having the door dead center. So I'm gonna take the door and put it over here and just scrape away, just not with the small edge of the knife. That's a perfect size door. And then we'll go back in and add a little bit of darker color and just fill it in like that. Now we've got this opening, right? This house is so cold and so abandoned that it's just, doesn't even have a door on it. The door got kicked in a long time ago. 
Okay, we're gonna put a little chimney with the small edge of the knife, halfway down into the, the, the roof, half above the roof, right? Very easy little things you can do to make shapes like this, guys. It's not just me, you can do it too. You really can. We'll put some sideboards in on the side of the cabin over there. That's really only for the people that are up here looking at it like that close, really. Okay, a little bit of liquid white. Going to edge the, the side of the door. I, they don't even have to be neat or anything, right? You want them to look different. This guy's a little bit too thick for me, but it's all right. We can shape him back, cut some of that away, right? That's why they call it a knife. You got to cut crap out of the way. Bam. Any more questions from anyone? Uh, Dean from Scenescape Shop says he needs a Krasniak and a London in his life. We've told him no. Yep, you are not allowed. They are both mine. Uh, <laughs> Alright, uh, let's see. Annette Babcock sent a lot of few things. Nice. Okay, so you can see here, we've taken that color and just sort of drug it away from the, the cabin, right? Grabbing it. And again, that's why we have that this slight downward angle right here because that makes the point of the cabin here look closer than the rest. You see what I mean? Everything is for a reason. Everything. Okay. You're know, like, there's no more room. What can you possibly do? Oh, well, there's lots we can do, right? So let's get a fence. And again, since now that, now that we know how to highlight a, a building without brown, then let's do a fence. Why not? Let's put a fence off the side over here. Right? Make your fence perspectively the same size as your door, right? You don't want to have a giant fence. Little teeny tiny door. Okay, and we're just touching and kind of pulling to the side with a little bit of that color on our brush. All right, scrape up a little knife. There we go. What size is that canvas, Josh? This is a 16 by 20 inch canvas today. Today! Okay. Now, we'll do it in the in the more up-close fence, how you can have a broken section. I love broken sections of fence. And what colors are you using today, Josh? Prussian blue, midnight black, titanium white. That's it. You can use any color, dark. I use the darker color blue because I like a darker color sky and scene for this one. Uh, but you could use any of the blue color, you know, that they make. Windsor Newton, Gambling 1980, Van Gogh's got good stuff, you know, all sorts of things. Don't have to use what I have. So Prussian blue, titanium white, and... Midnight black. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, a little bit of white just over the bits of our fence. Just like that, you got the little snow-covered fence all beat up out there. Take the bottom of the guys and just pull them out. Pull them out, make them nice and blended. Nice and soft. There we go. Now, depending on the angle of yours, you know, you could have a different look to it. Again, it just got a little bit dry down here, so I'm just adding a little bit of liquid white. You guys shouldn't have to do this if yours is still wet. Just a little liquid white so we could make the technique work down here. Even brightens up our, our little bit of snow. Almost looks like ice now. Looks cool. All right, let's get another little tree back here on the side just to give this some depth, right? Again, how many layers of depth have we painted already today? Especially now that the cabin is, where are we at? One, two, three, four, five, six. So this will be the seventh layer. If you can put your tree in front of your cabin, it'll be your seventh layer of depth so far. Okay, don't want to go all the way down. Don't want to go all the way down to the bottom because That'll be more layers of depth, right? Again, just the tip top of the tree. And then start to come down, come down. You want a lot of paint on your brush, so make sure it's nice and thick. Right, because you want these bits to be the textured bits. Bam, go over our, tr our cabin like that, and all of a sudden now the cabin is pushed back another layer of depth, right? Just like that. Okay, now I want to take a little bit of the liquid white and the uh, Prussian blue over here. 
Because I don't want all the snow highlights to just be white, right? You've got to have change, differences, right? So we'll go like that. And then we'll come down and just every so often, right? I don't want to, this tree isn't, isn't so super bright, right? I just want there to be a little bit of difference there. A little difference in color is all we really need. Doesn't have to be super white. You can take like a bit of boulder and stick it in front of him. Come out that way, right? That makes it different than the other painting right there, let me tell you. Right, take the base of our tree, a little bit of our boulder, pull them out in different directions, just kind of change the color up, right? Now we got this tree with a rock underneath it. Like that rock was like, oh, you're not gonna grow, and the tree was like, oh, bet, bet, you're gonna do it. Babe, in your classes on YouTube, and obviously later on on Skillshare, is that could you are these classes that a someone who's never painted before could watch ab so stinking lootly uh therefore you know if you start at number one you can go through and you learn how to put you know liquid white on the canvas uh, about how much we need different little things and we really focus on on clouds in module one so if you've never picked up a brush we'll show you how to cover the canvas how to do a scene with just black and white, just two colors, and that'll be your first painting. And then the next painting, we jump in, we do the clouds, then we take more time in, on the mountains. And we'll do, you know, majority of time on the mountains, and then we'll finish it off real quick. Won't be really detailed like this, right? And then in the third one, we'll do all trees. It's the one down here. I don't know if you guys can see it. So we do a sunset now, right? We did a, a white sky, then we do a blue sky, then we blast into a sunset sky and, uh, and do that. And then the next one, uh, is a green sky. I don't know if you can see the green sky over here, like a little witchy cabin, and we work on buildings and fences and roads and man-made stuff, right? Speaking of man-made stuff, we're missing a chemtrail in here, guys. Whoop. Just like that. Nice little messy bit of white up there. And then you just swipe it until it sort of blends. You get the straight line. Everybody knows what it is. You've seen them all the time. Uh, Annette Babcock says, for those that may not have Midnight Black, you can mix two parts Elizabeth Crimson and one part Thalo Green. I saw it on another site, tried it, and it's close. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I, I use, like, Bob Ross brand has the mountain mixture that I use sometimes in lieu of black. And it's kind of like a little purpley. You know, it, you just use white. You can use Noir or whatever brand you have. I'm not here to tell you what brand to use, okay? I use Bob Ross brand because I bought a whole giant set before the damn documentary came out. And then everyone got all up in a huff, right? So, but I also use Gamblin 1980. I use Windsor & Newton. I use all sorts of colors. I had a bunch of oil paints given to me. I, I used those. They were all different, different ones. So it doesn't matter as long as it's a nice thick oil paint, right? Man, this looks good. I almost, see what I, what I did in the last one was added snow to the bottom because it wasn't, you know, as bright for me. I think I kind of like this one. But you guys know me. Either missing a UFO or it's got to have a ton of detail. Right? All right, so let's take, I did this in the other painting in the module six of the landscape class, the, the blue, black, and white one that we did. And it looked really cool. So I'm gonna take just out of his door, right? We're gonna come down a little bit and then we're gonna make steps. All right, different angle, longer as they get down to the bottom, of course. And then with a little bit of lick white mixed with the titanium white on the small edge of our knife and above the steps, we're gonna to try to deposit a little bit of white color so we get a little bit of snow on top of our steps. Even with the big edge of the knife, you can do it with. There we go. Nice and messy. Remember, it doesn't have to look perfect. Like, we're... This is in the depths of winter when there's a lot of snow all over the place, right? It could be thick. It could be thin. It could have all sorts of stuff in there. All right, kind of shaping our stairs. Bam. Might have even done the white first and then gone back in and just touched in the bits of black to make them look, you know, 
however you want it. And then again, on the outside, scrape it off, take our little one inch brush, pull it off very slightly, and now you got a little difference in your snow, right? Same thing back here. Put it in, and then make it very light. Don't want to blend it all away, just want it to be light, just different, right? Don't have to be thick, doesn't have to break. You can literally smush it in, smush it in wherever, pull it out. They don't even have to connect. Very much like uh, like the sea foam that we're going to paint on Wednesday in the Kraken module, right? I'm releasing that one free to everyone on Wednesday as a sort of a, a sneak peek at what the classes will be like. It's much more in-depth and detailed. We do, you know much more explaining in the classes than we do here and really try to make it easy for the absolute beginner or try to show maybe an advanced more advanced painter something that they didn't know i learn stuff all the time i learned how to explain to you guys how to you know break with the snow and i hope it works for some of us okay now i'm going to get a little bit of dark maybe this guy's got a driveway we're just going to cut it back there and as we get closer to us obviously it gets wider very small back here. Maybe he's got like a like a quad or four wheeler he likes to park back there. On the side of the house. Maybe throw a tarp over it for the winter, right? Back when, when the guy lived here anyway. He obviously hasn't lived here for many, many years. And just swipe over it. And just like that, that difference in color indicates something, right? It indicates we have that and then your brain will fill in whatever it's gonna think on its own. You're like, ooh, that's a driveway, or ooh, that's a walking path, or you know, uh, here's the, the sidewalk up to his house, or whatever. Like everyone will look at it and see something different, and that's the best part about painting, guys. Again, you can hear, you can hear the knife canvas, right? That's how you know you don't have any paint left. But down here in our snow, where I want it to be messy, I like that, right? So I'll use the knife, until there's no paint left on it, smush it down, and that'll give us differences in our color of our snow, right? Take our one-inch brush again, just so lightly, just like we're touching the clouds, just very light. We come from this side, very lightly. And now it looks like maybe over the side of that fence, you know, it drops off, and that's why we have this little bank of fog. And you can see, the reason we can see everything very brightly and nicely is that we created the fog back there. You can't add all this thick on top of all that thick without having some thin in between. Does that make sense to anyone? Can anyone hear me? Yeah. I feel like uh, Major Tom out in space. No one can hear me. Ground control, can you hear? Yes, I can hear. I'm sitting right here. <laughs> I'm talking to the fans, babe. Oh, yeah, well, they can't answer back. Ground control to Major Tom. <laughs> uh, John, Cra John Krasniak says, by the way, your background is stunning. Oh, thank you. Yes, anyone who hasn't seen the new, you know, uh, wall space since London and I took a day without painting and, uh, <laughs> and organized it. It was a lot of, babe, where should I put this one? And she would say, there. And I go, no, I want it over here. <laughs> <laughs> Stop asking me then. Yeah. She's like, fine, don't ask. I'm like, no, I want your opinion though, babe. It doesn't matter, you're not listening I know, right? to it. Okay, let's do one more big tree one day, guys. Allison said she's going to try this painting later. Roberta Harris missed the information about the YouTube membership okay. being at $7.99. Yep. So, Roberta, I know you're already a member at that price point, and now you will have access to all of the class videos at your $7.99. I'm getting rid of the different tiers. They're annoying. It's like pretentious, like, oh, you know, this person paid, you know, a, a, this membership and that person did that membership. Like, it's just, if you want to pay, you should have everything. So if you guys pay for the channel, it's eight bucks for 30 days a month. And, you know, you've got a hundred videos that are free on my channel. And then you got 10 videos, 11, maybe 12. I, we still have to do the other one. 12 videos, 17 hours of deep instructional video. No messing about. I literally, I show you how we load the brush. I show you how we mix the colors. Everything is right up here in front of the, the painting. Because sometimes I'm like this and my double chins <laughs> like to make an appearance in my show, right? 
So we hold it up here in the classes so you can see, you know, we go four times. Like you can see exactly how many times when I flip the brush, what I'm doing. They're very detailed. They're very valuable at $7.99, okay? And I'm only putting them at that price so we can just you get the competition, right? Okay, not, no, not competition like any other painters, but the company that screwed me over. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm going to do, I loaded the brush. You saw me do it. Blue and black, right? We're almost out of blue completely. I have way more black than that. I've used much more blue than any other color, as you can imagine, right? You can see. So I want this to be very thick. We're not mixing it with any white. We're not mixing it with any other color, blue and black. That's it. That's all you need. Very thick on the brush, very sharp edge. We're going to come up to the top. We're going to start above the mountain and we're going to come down, okay? We're going to go like this. You can even make it a little curved if you wanted to. Just a little, not nothing crazy. And the more and more we go down, the harder we're going to push. You can see we're pushing harder. The tree is growing in width, right? Come back in. Grab up some more paint on our on our fembers. Come back and fill it in. The more you push, then your bristles are going to spread out. The thicker your tree is going to be down to the bottom. And then that's going to make it look realistic, right? Man, that's fantastic. Even with that little bend, I like it. So very sharp at the top. Push harder as we go in, right? So we're very lightly and then harder as we go down to the bottom. More into the canvas. And just make sure we got some semi-straight. I like to have even a couple bumps because the tree's never perfect. You know what I mean? You got a, a knot in the tree that makes it look like it's not a straight edge. So every once in a while, add a little bump and some little bit of character to it. A little bit of character. And of course, guys, share this video. Share my page. I can't reach everyone in the world. I wish I could, but I can't. So share it for me. Share when you when you do this painting or any of my other paintings. Share the link, right? Hit that little three button up in the top corner or down underneath the video, or there's a little like arrow that says share. You click that, you copy the link, and then you, whenever you post your picture, you push copy, paste, bam, drop it in, and now you've shared it. Very simple. Okay, down here, coming from the right again, because all of our light is coming from the right, so we're gonna start on the right side with the white and the, and the kind of grayish, bluish mixture down here, and pull it to the side. Pull it to the side in sort of a, you know, this is an exaggerated shape. You don't need to go down and over so much, but you do want a little bit. That helps make it look round, okay? One knife light length at a time, okay? Come back in. Bam, you can see why we don't go all the way to the edge with the mountain or all the way down, because you want to have this lighter fog so your big thick paint won't have a problem sticking to our branch, right? For anyone that still wants to enter the raffle, you can still do that by sending one dollar entry fee to Venmo Happy Little Landscapes. Okay, yeah. So everybody, if you're, you're the, the the lines are closing soon. We're almost done, which means we're gonna do the raffle at the end. So if you want to get your last minute raffles in, London is ready to take down names. And then we're going to throw them in the hat and draw. Only short names. Yeah, only you're only allowed if your name has four letters or less. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. Okay, a little bit of our dark color. The same color we made the tree out of. Now we're going to go on the other side, right? We're going to sort of meet in the middle. Try to stay out of your guys' way as much as I can. And you want this part to be nice and thick, right? We want to be able to feel the texture of the bark when, uh, when it's dry. So you can touch, pull away. And that'll leave little bits that you'll be able to see from the side. It's fantastic. It's the first thing I do. Like if I go somewhere and there's a piece of art there, I go look at it from the side. Because if you can't see any texture on that sucker, it's a freaking print on a canvas and that's garbage. Okay. You don't like, like we went to tons of, of, um, fundraisers and charity auctions and different stuff. And, can't even give you the real canvas. He's giving you a, a canvas print to auction off. That's garbage. Come on. If it's like a cancer research something or, or some type of cancer benefit and you can't give your original piece, you're a piece of trash, in my opinion. Give, a, give me a print. That's nuts. You tell them, babe. Yeah, I will tell them. Because, again, you're not going to get a print like for this, this little drawing. And I'm no big artist. Don't get me wrong, right? I, I literally was good at this and I try to show you guys how to get better that's all but uh, 
you know, we're auctioning off an original painting. It's not a print. That is just ridiculous to me. So, there we go. It makes it more valuable when you get an actual original. Okay, now, this tree is a little bit tall. So I'm going to use the yardstick that we love so much, just to be able to rest our hands on. Okay. And then we're going to make our little tree branches, just bouncy and, and all sorts of messy. What's up, babe? You can also buy a yardstick on Amazon.com forward slash yep. shop. Forward you can slash get these on. right on my Amazon shop. London just said the link. I'm sure John is posting the link. Yep. You can also go to paintwithjosh.com. All the links are there as well. So head on over to paintwithjosh.com. It's the new website. There we go. Now with these, I'm picking them in places that aren't going to have a whole lot of thick paint, right? So right here in this soft area where the fog was, we can come down and throw this giant guy off over here as long as we want to put him, right? And it's not going to mess anything with the mountain. It's not going to be hard to put on because we have that foggy area there. And that's why I'm selecting this area to add one of our branches in because it will be easier to do because there's a lighter area there, right? So maybe the next one comes off this lighter area and yours might look totally different because your light areas are in a different place, which is fine. Okay, maybe this guy comes over here and then bam, oh, he was monstrous. He wanted to grow. That wasn't me, guys. That was the tree. Okay, I'm gonna show you over here. Try to stay out of the way. So he started to come down and then he was like, nope, I'm coming across the branch out you know, across the tree, wraps it around, makes this branch look like it's on this side of the tree. Those are my favorite ones to paint. All right, come over. This is why you need that paint thinner to fill it in over that nice, thick, dark, you know, or white uh, paint. And you want to have enough paint thinner on your brush. Because if you don't, it's not going to be nice and easy. It'll be nice and hard. And there's a little bit of a branch off of that side. You never know. And yours can have branches any which way you want to put them, right? I love doing these little ones that, like, just stick off the side of the tree. And as you walk past them, they catch you in the arm of your shirt. You're like, ah! It's like the worst pain you ever felt. That's what I, those are the ones I love painting because they remind me of all that pain that i gone through. Every time I go fishing and try to walk through the forest and you get these freaking jabs in the arm, you know what I mean? There we go. Couple little tree branches, nothing crazy, right? It's really cold winter. This guy doesn't even have any foliage on him, no leaves or anything. And you don't have to go all the way down. All right, maybe there's one over on this side. It goes up and off to the side. Obviously, the bigger they are down around the bottom, the bigger the branches are going to be as they come off the tree, right? So you can take it and really scrub it out and make sure that the part in the front is nice and chunky down around the bottom. Then it gets thinner as we go to the end can't have a big thick end of a branch with a little teeny tiny branch holding it up otherwise guess what it would have broke off and fallen a long time ago and that's what these little swips are when you take them and just shoot one like this straight out the straight out the side of the tree you get that little bit that's a broken branch right these are all the chosen few branches that get to live all these other little broken pieces they tried to grow up but they never got there Then you can go back, you can add all these different little, you know, different little branches to your other branches. You can sit here for hours and do these little things, right? I go quick to kind of show you guys, which I think is sort of slightly impressive that they end up turning out this well when I'm going so fast. You guys have all the time in the world to decide where you want to put yours, what shape you want it to be. This looks fantastic. I'm leaving it just like that. Cool. Should we do the raffle at 11.30? Yeah, it should be done in the next few minutes. Okay, you've got six. Okay, why, why do we have a time limit on when we have to do it? Here we go. Bam, bam, bam. Just adding a little bit of white to the tip tops of my branches over here. Remember, it doesn't have to connect. We just want mm -hmm. slight little differences on the branch, especially this guy that comes around the front of the tree. We separate him making them a slightly lighter color, and that way you can tell he's coming in front of the tree. 
All right, a couple of things, and then we'll sign it, and we'll be good. A little bit of light up on that guy. Maybe caught some down here, caught some on that branch. Definitely caught some up here in the corner where it makes this 90. Always remember, go back and get more snow on your brush. Don't try to force it. If you end up pushing harder, you're going to make a bigger uh, design than you wanted to. There we go. Hey, babe, look, I found the most perfect thing to do the raffle from. What? The cigar box with Jerry in it. Nice. There we go. Okay. A little bit there. And there's like a little bit of light area or something over here. Now we're going to take the bottom of this tree. Pull them out. You can pull them out in both directions. It doesn't matter. Uh, he lives up on this hill like this. Rosetta said, don't forget the birds. Oh, I will get the birds in. I got them. I got them. Let's see. So now it looks like just from pulling out over there that we have this little bit of uh, hill that the tree lives on. Birds. Come in, grab a little bit of that black and blue that we have left, keep it dark, and then maybe down here we've got a, a bit thicker and taller of a fence. All right, so we're going further away, getting closer over here, and bigger, which also means further down that, right? I'll come back in with that blue and white mixture. Throw a little bit of liquid white in it so it will stick. All right, gotta make it thin. Oh shoot, we didn't do the uh, side beams. Gotta put some side beams up there. Do this guy's like this on this angle. I like that it's only women in the raffle. No men's, huh? No. No man's. Okay, taking that, we'll go off the edge, go around the side. Just to catch the eye of the buyer as they're walking down their hallway, right? Put another one down in here. Let's see. Okay, and then we're gonna make our broken bit. There we go. A little bit there. And we'll come up here. And this piece is like broken off and fallen down. It's like a chunk of paint skin. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> that one's like fallen down in a way. It broke off. No one's out here to maintain these things. Right? So the sucker done fell off. Now we're going to take them and kind of pull them out a little bit flatter. And then we got a little bit more down here. I'm only using the filbert brush because the one inch brush is a bit too big for this area. All right, now that we got it out, there we go. Now we can pull it. All right, maybe this way, just underneath. And then this guy, bam. You know, I'm folding over 50 little pieces of paper My into goodness. balls for this raffle. Okay. Now we're going to finish highlighting this sucker with that same white mixture that we did. All right, so we'll go down over here. Just on the top of the beams, right? You want to have some of that dark beam underneath. So go above your shadow a little bit and add it. And then again, just on the right side of our beams, not the whole thing. You want to save some shadow. Save the shadow. We got our last little bit of snow right above this guy. Like he's just sitting down, fell down, and sat like that. Man, that looks good. That is looking good, you guys. The hell is that? He's a knife or something. That's what it's great about the filbert brush too. It's almost like an eraser. As long as it doesn't have a lot of paint that you can go back and and fill stuff in or shape it. To be perfect. You guys know I don't like perfect paintings. I don't like perfectly straight lines or anything like that, but I do like my shadows and my depth to be perfect, I guess. So, what do you guys think? 
Everybody thinks it's fantastic. Everyone thinks it's fantastic. Let me clean up here real quick. We'll do the raffle. The raffle is now closed. You may not enter any more dollars. And we'll draw a name and see who wins, right? This is all because John Krasniak, one of the members on the channel, uh, bought the painting that we're donating, or that we're raffling off, not really donating, but raffling. And it was his idea. He bought the painting and said, hey, do a raffle with this. And I was like, man, you're the man. Okay, we will do a raffle. Okay, so let's sign it and then we'll do the raffle. So where are we going to sign? I'm going to sign over here underneath this rock. I'm going to clean this up. Now I bet your fingers hurt. See what you guys did to women's fingers? You, you entered too many times. <laughs> I had to write everybody that entered ten times or five times. Let's write their name down five or ten times. I know. Okay, last two entries right here. Okay. If you ever end up like this at the end, okay, I'm going to show you. We're just going to clean off the palette, scrape it all. We don't have enough left to really save anything down onto the paper towel, all right? Get all the thick bit off, as much as you can of your thick paint off of your, your palette. Now we're going to get like four paper towels. All right, just small ones because they, they're like the half size ones. Fold it over, fold it over again, and then dunk this end into our cleaner, okay? And this is our uh, odorless mineral spirits that we have. Now look at that. Literally wipe it off with the wet side. There's some color still there. You can get everything off. And now go back in with your dry side of your paper towel, which is why I like folding them in half. And then poof, brand new palette, right? Yeah. What's up? Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, let's do the raffle. Is everyone ready for the raffle? All right. We have our one of our space cigar boxes that I painted a long time ago. Not the best, in my opinion. But it's got Jerry in it. Very sloppy, but it does have Jerry, Jerry in inside, it. which is our our uh, little resident alien man. Okay. You have to just let everybody see. The box. Okay, please. trying not to spill them all. Everyone, you got crump, crunched up pieces of paper up in there? Oh, oh, they're coming out, right? You can see them. Okay, we're gonna reach in. We're not looking. We're not looking, right? You see them? We're not looking. Go all the way to the bottom back corner. No, I'm just kidding. Wherever it is, okay, I'm actually gonna grab up a couple and just drop them just so it's random. And this is gonna be the winner right here. Show it to everybody. Hope you're excited. Here it comes. Annette! Annette Babcock, I assume, is the Annette we're talking about. Can everyone see that? So Annette is going to win. Where's our painting? Here we go. Annette, you have won a Josh Kirkham original. Thank you for participating. I'll get your address through Messenger, and uh, we'll ship this off to you. So, uh, again, through Messenger, write to me. See if uh, you want me to... Uh, personalize it or write a message or whatever if you're gonna give it away or whatever it doesn't matter I will do whatever you need so thank you to Annette for uh, joining and uh, I like this idea we might have to do this more often what do you guys think I like it I like it too okay here's the box <laughs> here's the winner we should even mail that little piece of paper with Annette's name on it to her as well so, and as you can see, we've got a full painting. We just gave away a painting. We do lots of fun stuff over here at Paint with Josh, right? She so, goes, and, and that bad cook goes, I never win anything. <laughs> you won today. You won today, girl. Okay, so we'll be doing this again. We might auction off time and do a, do a thing. Or do it, you know, like a live auction. We'll paint the painting that we're going to send away, you know, in front of everybody. So, or we'll do this. We can auction off this one for next week. If everyone, If anyone is interested right i don't want to do stuff and have you guys be like oh i'm so sick of this he does this all the time like if anyone is interested in winning this painting right if it's still available by next weekend <laughs> but if anyone's interested in buying and winning this painting or one of the class paintings right maybe we can make a poll and be like which one would you want to join in for or something i don't know i mean you can always if you want to buy them at you know full price or the YouTube price which is 30% off. I don't tell that up to a lot of people. Well, but if you use Facebook's the Facebook's here now. If you use the promo code YouTube, all caps YouTube when you check out of my uh, Etsy store, 
then you'll get 30% off of any original painting. So use that promo code and uh, maybe we'll auction this one off. But if anyone is interested in, in and you want to see more of these free giveaways, well, not free giveaways, but dollar giveaways, then uh, we'll do more of them with other paintings and more recent newer paintings. So we will put out like a thing with like four and be like, okay, which one would you guys want to win? Whichever one gets the most votes, then we'll start an auction for that one or whatever, a yeah. giveaway, yeah, some kind of something. Good. So, But besides that, we showed you how to get all these different blues and whites and, and darks, all the details in our cabin without brown, right? You would normally think if you're going to paint a building, you need to have brown, but it is 100% not true. So if, as proven by today. If somebody lived in a different country and they wanted some of your artwork, Okay, what would so, be the most cost-effective way for them to get your artwork? So I don't ship canvases overseas. Uh, just because the, the shipping cost is outrageous. But I have a lot of my canvases in print form where you can purchase the poster at much less of a cost and it will send it to whatever facility is closest to you and then they'll print it and ship it to you. Uh, so like if you know you wanted this as a poster, you go onto my website or my Etsy store, you scroll down, you find the poster that you like, you click buy, the company will ship it straight to you. It doesn't even come to me first, it goes straight to you. So. You know, it's a cool way, you know, they take returns and exchanges if we provide photos and the damage and all sorts of stuff. So very safe. Everyone that's ever gotten one of the prints loves them. I've had some here that I, you know, I had a mail here. I signed them and then we put them up for sale, sent them away that way. So, but it's very cool. They, you go right through the site, uh, go to my Etsy store, find the one that you like, like my space one or different prints. And then you can purchase right through there and they'll ship it to you internationally. So it's great. Can you point that fan over here? Yeah, it's very hot for some reason. Sorry. I'm sweating. Freaking Las Vegas, man. Uh, so John Krasniak, I got to get your painting from a couple weeks ago. Shit, that was finally dry. Like the paint was so thick on the, on the cabin itself. It took a while to be fully dry. Um, but besides that, we'll ship that out. We'll get the painting to Annette shipped out. I don't have any other shippings to do, I don't think, right? So, and then we'll talk about, hand me the Kraken, babe, real fast. That the one. Kraken? The small Kraken. It should be dry-ish. You say that, but the last it's time dry was, enough. Last time so, you said something was dry, grab Now, it. this will be the painting that we'll be doing next Wednesday, right? So, in three days' time, I'll be posting pictures of this, and, you know, we're going to show you how to paint this on a black uh, canvas, a 12 by 24 inch black canvas, okay? I got mine from Hobby Lobby. They are very nice on the back. Like none of that messy staple back crap. It's, everything's all wrapped in. There's even a little gasket around, you know, with some caulking on the inside. Like Hobby Lobby is killing it for canvases. So that's where I'm going to be buying mine. But 12, 12 by 24 inch, you can put your liquid black on it now and let it dry. And then in a few days time, we'll be able to do this video, get all this color, paint the pirate ship with a palette knife, do the crack. It's really cool. So I hope you guys are excited for Wednesday when this painting is coming out. And, uh, you know, until then, check out my Etsy store, right? Sign up for the $7.99 YouTube class and you'll get all of the professional class videos that we did, okay? Uh, so the person, the people that do have signed for the $30 class, when I cancel it, it will send you your $30 back and then you just sign back in at $7.99 and you'll have all that same access at a much lower price. I figure the lower price that we do, the more people will buy them. Um, you know, or at least try them out for a month. You don't have to, it's not a forever, you know, henceforth you have to pay for them. Try them out for a month, see how you like the classes, see how you like the differences in the videos from the classes to what we do here on the weekends or what we do on Wednesdays. The Wednesday video is a painting from the classes, so it's a sneak peek of what the classes are going to be like, how in depth, how much more zooming in and out on details, how close can we get, how much differently can I explain something for the the newer beginner painter to have it click, right? That's that's the thing I strive for is the click in other people that go, oh, if I did it like Josh showed me how, then I get, oh, that's awesome. You know what I mean? And then you become a better painter. So that's what's uh, important to me. But besides that, you guys, I don't have much else to talk about, right? Did we cover everything on the list? Yeah. Sweet. Um, so. I think the bit you forgot about was uh, how grateful you are and how blown away you are by everybody's support and the fact that, you know, they sit and talk to me every Sunday. And it's true. We are, we love all of the fans. I can't, when I first started this channel, I never thought, you know, I was, I was putting videos out to no one. No one was watching them. 
No one was trying my paintings. No one was commenting. So, especially to the people that want to pay for the extra content, I am super proud, thankful that you, you know, would take your hard-earned money and give a little bit of it to me so I can show you in more depth how to do things. We're grateful for every single free subscriber, for everyone that likes the Facebook pages, for all the support that you guys give us. Uh, you know, when you buy the paintings or buy the hats, buy the merchandise, you know, shop through my Amazon store. Uh, we, we do all this work for, to make your guys' lives easier. So, you know, we appreciate that you continue to come watch it every week. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's really cool. touching. It's very cool to us to, to think that people want to, you know, we're, we were at like 1,720 YouTube subscribers. We're over 3,000 Facebook likes. But that many people care about what I'm trying to do. You know what I mean? That's just, it's crazy. I never thought my wildest dreams. And hopefully one day I'll be, you know, with 25,000 subs and, and all sorts of crazy success, right? But in the meantime, I'm struggling and uh, trying to show you guys how to do cool stuff so you don't have to, and to struggle. And to right? think the quicker that people get us to 25,000, the quicker we can clip the video that we're making right now to put next to the one that says, yeah, you got to get 25 Yeah, bucks. right? <laughs> yeah, so again, I can't reach everyone, so you guys have to share the videos for me, put them out, share the links, say, hey, this guy Josh with Paint with Josh is really cool. He does really neat scenes. He's very explanatory. He's very good at telling us how to do things or zooming in. Or he's entertaining, and he's not some boring mumble mouth that just sits there and paints like, you know, do we not have fun? Do we not have fun when we're here? So yeah. share the video, get it out to more people, and bring all those people into here. Like, who was it? Michelle? It was her name, Michelle, that said she was the first time watching? Deborah. 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 See, she's first time in, right? Now, Deborah, take this link and share it out to everybody that you know so more people will come, and then more people will come, and then eventually the entire world will be in my little painting room with us, and we can sit and paint, right? So, besides that, I want to say goodbye to everybody. Uh, it's been a great painting today. It's been a great show. Nice hour and 45-minute show for you guys. What time? I really... Sorry, what time do videos get released on Wednesdays? At 3 a.m. PST. Okay, cool. So by the time you wake up on Wednesday, the, the video will be there. Um, unless you're up at 3 a.m. and you want to catch it right when it goes out. I do it that way so the people in England, it's there at 8 or 11 in the morning. You know, people watching Australia, it's there at some point, you know, during the day or the next day. But uh, yeah, besides that, I really appreciate the support. Please support my shop. You can buy this painting. You can buy the hats. All different colors, all different color shirts, any painting you see here, all the prints, all the coffee mugs, and the pillows, and all sorts of stuff that we have uh, is in my Etsy shop. You can go to etsy.com slash shop slash paint with Josh. It was very hard. I was thinking about <laughs> not saying happy landscape art the whole time it was back here. And shop slash paint with Josh, right? It almost, almost said happy little landscape. Um, yeah, follow my YouTube channel, of course, uh, youtube.com slash paint with Josh. Uh, Instagram.com slash paint with Josh K, right? Some other butthole already had paint with Josh. So paint with Josh K on Instagram. Same thing on TikTok, paint with Josh K. And uh, until the next time that we see you guys, which will be Wednesday or next Sunday for the next live, uh, I really hope you try this painting and send it in to me via Facebook. Go to uh, facebook.com slash paint with Josh and then message me your pictures of your finished paintings, of any of the, the paintings that I've done. I love seeing. Uh, I think it was Anne McCarty Shroy posted one earlier today. Before I was going to go live, I saw it, and it was one of my paintings with a road in it. You know what I mean? It just makes me happy. What's on my face when you guys try my stuff, right? So, everyone tries Kevin Hill's stuff. He doesn't give a crap about who's he, trying his painting. He doesn't painting. respond to comments on right. his YouTube video. He won't respond to you. He doesn't care if you try his painting or not. He's not happy when he sees someone that does a good version of his painting. He doesn't give two craps, okay? We I get, cra we I get. give two craps. I give three craps that you try my painting. It just makes me feel happy. Like, wow, someone else sat through an hour of my blabbing voice and came up, and I was able to convey to them how to create what they did. And it's it really makes me happy. So besides that, I love all your comments. I try to answer all your questions and stuff. You guys can message me anytime you want. Um, I'm usually stuck to my phone constantly. So, yep. uh, you know, after an hour and 45 <laughs> minutes, I think it's time for that other Red Bull day. And uh, we'll say goodbye. And we love you guys. And come back on Wednesday. And then come back on Sunday. And then come back on Wednesday. And then come back on Sunday every day until you die. Okay? Come back. <laughs> so, besides that, uh, thanks for watching the show uh, with Paint with Josh. And uh, 
you guys take care, and we'll leave whichever one you think, babe. I don't care. Uh, there's five on YouTube. We're going to stay on YouTube. Goodbye, okay. Facebook. Go over to YouTube, Facebook, and uh, catch the, the embarrassing, you know, intro videos. Okay, bye. 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 American Bye. Okay. All right, YouTube guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for staying with us. And now we'll do the intro that you guys normally see for when we release these videos, right? Look, all of a sudden, Josh is now taller. Hey, isn't that funny that I have to tiptoe just to be as tall? My calves are just ripped. Okay. Hey, guys, Josh, happy... Ooh, wow. I said, Josh, happy little landscape. See, oh, I knew there was no. going to be some issue. <sighs> hey, guys, it's Josh with Paint with Josh, right? And we're... Does that sound good? It sounds a bit stupid. Yeah. This is Josh from Paint with Josh. Hey guys, welcome to Paint with Josh on 16 by 20 inch canvas with just blue, black, and white for this painting. It came out fantastic. We did all these different layers of depth just with three colors, proving that you don't need a whole lot of colors in order to create a fantastic scene, okay? So get your stuff out, check the description below, find the three colors that we have. It's not a whole huge list. And in the beginning of the video, I show you the Blech. I show you <laughs> the exact brushes you need in order to create a painting like this one. So, I can't wait to see yours. We're just like this. Pow! Okay. That was good. I like that. And this painting came out freaking great. Okay, guys. Well, I've got other stuff to do today. Uh, more videos to make. So, go check out. Join the channel. You see that button that says join right underneath the bottom right of the video? What? Click that join Sign up for the $7.99 class. I know it will still say $29.99, but sign up for the $7.99 class, and I'm going to give that class, uh, that level, all access to all of the, the professional classes that we offer as well. So I hope you do that. I hope you take a look at the classes, see that they're different from the videos that we put out on the weekends and on Wednesdays, and that they're actually worth $8 a month. Seriously. I can't believe we're doing it for so cheap. But... Uh, Try those out, and then, again, you can try it for one month, and then just cancel your $8 the next month before it charges again. Like, see how you like them. Try them out. They're really in-depth and really uh, just great. Like, I don't want to toot my own horn or anything, but they're fantastic. Right? Okay. Well, we'll say goodbye to you guys, and uh, we'll see you next Wednesday and then also next Sunday. And until then, uh, I hope you can create something just as pretty with this video. So we'll next, see you later. Next Sunday, what's that live called? I don't know. It's not called Live Painting with Happy Little Landscapes. Well, yeah, no. It's Paint with Josh. <laughs> but, uh, okay. Well, you guys take care. We'll see you later and catch you on the next video. Bye, London. For, thank you, London, for responding to everyone's comments. It really came out fantastic. I really, really like how it turned out. So. All right, well, we'll see who's going to buy this one and just how fast it'll go. We'll talk to you guys later, all right? Have a good day. Peace.